But anyway, speaking of asking, uh, you know, thought leaders, people, you know, tough questions. Uh, I wanted to pull up this uh, clip of Jordan Sheraton, who asked a great question to Cornell yeah. West, and then encourage everybody to go over to Status Q and like and subscribe. I know we're going to try and get Jordan back in here soon. Uh, he's got a lot of great stuff that they're working on over at Status Q as 2024 amplifies. They're still covering what's going on on the ground in East Palestine. They're still covering the water crisis in Michigan. They're still covering the Democratic Party corruption and the Republican Party corruption and how they're handicapping third party movements. And they're talking about bread and butter, kitchen table issues. So, you know, yep. love our boys. Huge shout out. That is cool. Yet you're running now independent justice party. Jill Stein's running. You guys are kind of pulling from each other. Do you think that was a mistake possibly uh, to, to leave the Green Party? Because it seems like you're starting a party, so you're not against having uh, being part of a party. Uh, it just seems like you guys might be pulling from each other where if you were together, you could be, you know, people have a clear choice of the left. I don't consider RFK Jr. left at all. Right. Well, uh, so so what do you think of that criticism that you, you kind of have switched too much and people, you know, want you to reconsider and i had no idea that, that jill stein was going to end up running i mean you, she's right you pause it real quick yeah for that, uh, that i'm like what the fuck did you I, we've talked about this before but it's like what the fuck did you expect the green party to do dr west after you joined their ranks you know got everyone all excited oh we're gonna have finally have a freaking nominee they can maybe get some real traction start a movement get to five percent you leave them you abandon all of their volunteers and then you expect them to just lay down and die and not have a nominee sacrifice all their ballot access like they literally have to have a nominee to retain that ballot access that they've already worked so hard to obtain we talked about that with jason call who's jill stein's campaign manager um so I, yeah i just find it baffling that cornell west keeps coming out here and being like i i was blindsided by jill stein's decision to run for president with the green party i'm like what did you fucking think was gonna happen yeah i i mean i i think to be honest it, it certainly seems like he just kind of thought they weren't going to run anybody and that they were just going to endorse his independent run which i think is pretty delusional i think it's pretty delusional and not a good look to come out here and just be like oh i thought everybody was just going to bow to whatever decision that i made especially when it's like your third time doing that and it's a really bad decision and everybody had to reason with you to get you to make the right call of joining the green party in the first place people like chris hedges you know uh who well, has a firm commitment to the Green Party. We had to be like, hey, Dr. West, like this is the right way. Yeah, that's literally what he that's literally what he thought. That's what he thought. So anyway, but let's hear a little more from this because, you know, it's revealing, I think. And also shout out to Jordan for just asking that question the way everybody wanted to know the answer. A lot of people think you're splitting votes. A lot of people think you've uh, fucking, you know, made a lot of changes in your campaign. Oh, you were with this party. Then you were with this party. Then you were people think you should stop changing. Some what do you make of that? Like what a clear, perfect question to ask this. Right. Guy. And again, it's not like people are upset about Cornell West leaving the green party. Cause we just love the green party so much. Like I don't give a shit. All I care about is ballot access. And I think it's ridiculous, frankly, to continue this campaign, continue raising money and asking people to volunteer and get signatures for you. When we all know you're not going to get ballot access in over 40 States, like the green party will, we just, I'm sorry, but it's not going to happen. I doubt Cornell West will be on enough ballots to even win the electoral college if everyone in the country voted for him on the ballots he was on, right? Like, I don't even think he has a path to victory electorally. We'll see. Hopefully he proves me wrong, but I just don't think it's going to happen. It's incredibly hard without billions of dollars to get ballot access in like 45 plus states. It really is. And I just don't think his operation is well funded enough, uh, nor does it have enough enthusiasm because of all these missteps, because of the People's Party launch, all of these embarrassing things, which have really handicapped and just kneecapped this entire campaign from the beginning, un unnecessarily so, making it seem more and more unserious as it goes. But yeah, let's keep watching. That pressure's about a time. And I'm appreciative on the one hand, but on the other hand, I was glad to get out because there was no way that I could be myself, be fully and freely myself within the context of the Green Party. So I was glad to be independent. And you see, the justice for all parties is twofold. Certain states. Well, let me let know. me just let me just ask on the Green Party: Was the issue sure. that you guys had a, a difference in values, or more like there was too many bureaucratic layers that you had to jump through? That was the end of the clip that he has uh, up here. Um, I don't know if we want to go in and dig a little deeper in here. That was just the one that I flagged. It's all good. Um, I did find the full interview. If you want to, we can try to react to some more of this, but I don't yeah, know let's where. Yeah, let's go for it. Yeah, I have
that RFK Jr. left at all. Right. Uh, uh, so, so what do you think of that criticism that you, you kind of have switched too much and people, you know, want you to reconsider? Well, I mean, no. I mean, the idea of starting with the People's Party was because they came to me. And I always appreciate that. But there was no way that could work for a number of different reasons. It was very kind of Chris Hedges to suggest that I then move with Sister Jill and Brother Jamal and work with the Green Party. But it was clear that that was in no way a fit that would work. It was too much work inside of the Green Party, too many Green Party events, all the different internal Green Party Green Party debates with the various candidates. And I had no idea that, that Jill Stein was going to end up running. I mean, you know, she'd write with our campaign for, before that, uh, that pressure's about the time. So it seems like he keeps, it's almost like he's speaking outside of both sides of his mouth. Because on one hand, he wants to say, I, I couldn't be myself in the Green Party, like almost suggesting that they were, you know, trying to censor him or limit what kind of political speech he could engage in or something. But then he just goes on to say, I didn't want to actually run for the nomination. I didn't want to participate in these events. I didn't want to participate in the debates necessary to actually win the Green Party nomination, which is like, I, did you not get briefed on what? running for the Green Party nomination would entail before you agreed to run for the Green Party nomination. It just seems very bizarre to make that announcement and generate all that fanfare, get all these people to donate to the Green Party, sign up to volunteer for ballot access and all this stuff out of it due to excitement for your campaign, only to then turn around and be like, yeah, I didn't really feel like participating in their events or their debates. And I guess I'd rather spend that time trying to raise millions and millions of dollars necessary to independently achieve ballot access, which is a total fool's errand. Unless you're RFK Jr., who's bankrolled by billionaires, but even he's having a hard time getting on the ballots, which is why he's considering running for the Libertarian Party nomination just for their ballot access, even though he's not a Libertarian. Um, so yeah, I, I don't really understand this. I kind of wish he would give more specifics because it does feel like he's sort of throwing the Green Party under the bus. It kind of feels like he's suggesting that there's issues there, but refusing to elaborate on the specifics. Well, he just wanted them to give him the nomination. That's what this is. It just reeks of that. It just gets, I, he, he was like, they wanted me to dot my T's and cross my I's, and I wanted them to say, thank you for doing this, Dr. West. We stand behind you, right? And that wasn't the way it was going to go. And after he realized, that, oh, this isn't just the fawn over Dr. West party. This is the Green Party with principles and people who volunteer and spend their whole life building this fucking operation and who have done a lot of the heavy lifting to get you the ballot access that you will now receive as a result of getting through the green party primary and then you will have the entire general election and also as you go through and do all of these things people will presume you will be the presumptive green party nominee like you will get the press of being going through the green party thing but it will keep you legitimate now you're illegitimate as the justice for all party candidate you're completely illegitimate and do you know how illegitimate you have to be to have the green party be your legitimacy i'm sorry but like that's that's a party that's never gotten to five percent but at least people know it they understand it they've worked that hard to get it there so of course they're not just going to hand you the keys and be like yeah drive off in the fucking mercedes pal we'll follow with you we'll throw the rice in the air and let the church bells ring you know what i mean like no I'm sorry, that's not gonna that's not gonna be the way that this goes down. And that's that's something that the Green Party has been consistent about. Again, all the love in the world for Jesse Ventura. He kind of was hopeful for the same thing to be like, hey guys, rally behind me or don't. Um, and and that's why he chose not to run. I think the more respectable thing to do is to choose not to run. Uh, because now it's just an embarrassment. It's like, oh, you couldn't put up with that crap, but now you're still begging people for money to go nowhere. Like, and that's what this campaign is, guys. Unfortunately, it's going nowhere. A lot of people don't like that. A lot of people really wanted to succeed. And I know that there are people that are working really hard to make it happen but it's not going to right so i can't tell the working class people to uh, on a women of prayer send their last five dollars to dr west because it's going to be like pissing in the wind it is throwing your money away it is setting it on fire you might as well go to vegas and gamble away because at least you'll have a better time doing it you know what i'm saying like that's the reality that he's found himself in that's I don't that doesn't bring me joy. I'm not having fun, you know, dogpiling on Dr. West. I think he's one of the greatest thought leaders. I think he's one of the great advocates of our time, but he has no political acumen when it comes to elections. He has no political launching with fucking Nick Branagh and the People's Party was one of the biggest jokes I've ever seen in my entire life. Then he finally got on track with the Green Party. Then he announces independent candidacy. Then he starts a fake party. Okay. I tweeted about this the other day. It's ridiculous. You can't expect people to fall for it. You know, thank you to Jordan Sheraton for holding his feet to the fire because he just literally, he's just dumbfounded. And he asks Cornell West why he's doing this as if he's dumbfounded. But the reality is, is that Dr. West wanted to be handed the nomination and then be able to go around, wave hands and run for president as the Green Party uh, nominee stumped from a few places in New York, LA, Chicago, uh, and, you know, 
potentially get out of fucking massive amounts of debt with the IRS when this is all over. And I'm appreciative on the one hand, but on the other hand, I was glad to get out because there was no way that I could be myself, to be fully and freely myself within the context of the Green Party. So I was glad to be independent. And you see, the justice for all parties is twofold. Certain states. Well, let me let me just let me just ask on the Green Party: Was the issue sure. that you guys had a, a difference in values, or more like there was too many bureaucratic layers that you had to jump through? Many bureaucratic layers. I mean, we we, we resonate in terms of policies and so forth. Mm. But 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 there's also a number of tensions that were personal that not even worth. I, I just don't understand how there could possibly be more bureaucratic layers to obtaining the Green Party nomination than there is to obtaining freaking ballot access independently in all of the states that you otherwise would have had access to if you had won the nomination. Like, I'm not denying it's hard work and probably a pain in the ass to, you know, run around the country participating in this Green Party primary or whatever. But let's be honest, bro, you were going to win that thing. It wasn't even going to be fucking close. You could have destroyed the competition. You're Cornell West, bro. Jill Stein on his, he, Jill Stein was yeah. going to be his campaign manager. That's like a golden ticket in the fucking Green Party, dude. He was, he had Chris Hedges, another very famous guy, Ajamu Baraka, another very famous guy in the Green Party. These people were there to help him. It honestly, dude, it rubs me the wrong way that he's acting as if this is like a smart decision on his part. It's like, oh, dude, it's a huge, it reminds me a lot of like, uh, not to take it back to the sports guard because I know we're supposed to retire the sports guard for a week for you guys, but in the in the Super Bowl, all right, Kyle Shanahan was the coach of the 49ers, right? And he made a huge, huge mistake as soon as it went to overtime. Massive error. What did he do? He chose to get the ball first. Now, why is that dumb? Because of the overtime rules, the Chiefs get the ball no matter what. So he goes down there, he scores three points. Now the Chiefs know, okay, we have all four downs. Extra try than you did. To get this and make this done, go score, you know, at least a field goal to tie it, but a, you know, touchdown to win, which they ultimately did, right? And Patrick Mahomes being a great quarterback. So you are Cornell West. You're going up against Patrick Mahomes. That's the political establishment, right? That's every opportunity uh, you have to seize upon. You're going up against the mammoth, the fucking, you know, uh, you're that's Goliath, you're David in this, you know, Kyle Shanahan makes that critical error. And what does he do? Does he go out and does he say, "Man, I fucked up, guys. I'm sorry. I've been, I'm, 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 I'm a real. I had a really great season. You know, I'm really proud of all these guys on the. Go that one falls on me. I should have, I should have thought about this better. You know, this falls on me. I, I made the wrong call. Everybody makes a mistake every once in a while. You know, we made it to the Super Bowl. We have a lot to be proud of. You know, let's move on next year. We will learn from this, right? Which is what the honorable like coach thing to do is after you lose. No, he's like, actually, I didn't know the rule. He was like, I didn't, I didn't understand the rule change of overtime. And you're like, what do you mean you didn't understand the rule change of overtime? There's only been one other overtime in the history of the Super Bowl. We're at Super Bowl like 50 fucking eight now or whatever the hell it is. 50, I don't even remember. Only one of them has been in overtime and you coached in it. What do you, what do you fuck you mean you don't know the fucking overtime? So that just makes you look worse. That just makes you look worse. Like why the hell didn't you? And then it was great. Chris Jones comes out after that's all over, and he was like, yeah, Andy Reid briefed everybody. We knew what we were going to do if it was overtime. We knew about the rule change. We knew exactly what we were going to do. That's a legendary Hall of Fame coach. Everybody's on the same page. The fucking Chris Jones doesn't even throw the ball. He's on the defense. He's like, oh, we knew what we were going to do if fucking Pat got the ball in his hands. We were going to win the fucking game. You know what I mean? Like, uh, It's crazy. That's what he's doing right here. He's like, oh, man, well, I didn't know that they weren't going to just hand it to me and that it wouldn't be just, you know, all, you know candy and bubble gum running for this fucking green party nomination you know what i mean like what did you expect that there wasn't going to be and, and then to also imply that you know you have a better chance being an independent which we all knew was not true and we told you guys on the podcast we we're like guys this isn't accurate information like he's saying he's gonna have better access to ballot. like with fucking howie hawkins the green party got on 48 ballot and i know it's harder to get on ballots this year than it was in 2020 let's say that he let's say they get on 40 states it's going to be mammothly more than what Cornell West is able to get on. Plus, they're going to be able to get on the ballot in places like California, where you could easily get to 5%, and you could campaign to get to 5% in California, and Joe Biden could still win the state, and you could still build the Green Party to 5%. We had a whole spiel that we did about how this was the perfect way for the Green Party to get to 5% and introduce the concept of ranked choice voting to people through the electoral, but then you know Cornell West fucked it all up. And again, like all of this comes with a freaking heavy heart, right? Like it's not like we want to have these opinions about Dr. West at the beginning of his campaign when he originally announced that he would be running with the Green Party. Zach and I were ready to become the biggest cheerleaders on YouTube. Like we debated the aforementioned Vosh, LOL, but also Kyle Kalinske defending 
you know, the merits of supporting this campaign. Again, when we actually thought it would have ballot access, we're like, this is necessary. No, we can't just have Joe Biden versus Donald Trump 2.0 with the left excluded from the conversation. That's not acceptable. We have to get behind this guy. But then he left the Green Party, went independent, basically throwing all of his potential ballot access in the trash. And it's like, yeah, at that point, our commentary has to change. We're not just going to you know, tell you guys to go engage in something that's completely hopeless. It's stupid. There's no reason to do that. There's no reason to support this. And if anything, it's actually hurting the third party movement, not just because of how unserious it looks from the beginning with the People's Party stuff and Nick Brada, but also because as Jordan Cheriton says, Jill Stein and Cornell West will pull from each other. People aren't going to know which one to vote for when they go into the ballot box and they want to support a leftist option, someone who's calling for a ceasefire, someone who's not going to continue the war in Gaza. We need one option. We can't have two people running on the same platform pulling from each other. It's just completely unserious. And honestly, I think Cornell West would be better off just dropping out of the race at this point. Just, you know, just drop out, honestly, and and you know try to restore some credibility to your reputation. I think it would be easy to like. I don't. I don't think people are gonna are gonna hold this over your head for the rest of your life or anything. I'm sure you could go back to writing books and speaking and and being a great advocate for the left, and you know that would be great. But this is completely unserious, and it's actually hurting the third party movement that you claim to care about. Yeah, it's it's just it seems really self serving at this point, which is like I don't know. That's rude to say, but it, it just seems directionless. And like, honestly, it feels like a vanity run. It feels mm-hmm. like a vanity run, you know? Like, I mean, he has the moral right to do it, but the, just the constant poor decision making, man, it fucking irritates me. It's like, I hate when the left has bad strategy because it makes us look foolish and dumb. Like, we can't possibly brainstorm better than this. And it's like, this was the Murphy's Law of insurgent lefty campaigns. I mean, it was just one after the other after the fucking other. And this was supposed to be the golden goose, man. If no, if like, what sucks to me is it's like, bro, if Cornell West can't do it, who the fuck is going to do it? Nobody's going to fucking do it. Like that's what's depressing about all this shit, right? This was our this was our last silver bullet. You know, this was the last one. Give it a shot, right? Now we're looking at decades down the line. Somebody has to build their fucking reputation up. They have to not fuck us for decades and decades and decades, and then maybe they'll be able to break through. Maybe they'll catch lightning in a bottle right it's nuts i don't think i don't i don't even know how to speculate who would be the next guy who would lead the left in any meaningful direction right half the people that i could think of fucking can't be president because they weren't born in america you know what i mean so then we're l- relying on the, us fuckers people that were born on this patch of dirt it's like oh jesus christ it ain't gonna be me pal yeah let's watch a bit more of this talking about but yeah but but i want to be honest about it but the uh but the only reason but there's two two reasons that's just for all parties important one is that as you can state you run as an independent, you have a certain number of signatures. You run as a party, you have far fewer. In other states, it's the opposite. So in some states, I'll be independent. In other states, I would need a party. In other states, there have been parties who come forward. Thank God for my brothers and sisters in Alaska, the Aurora Party. That's how I ended up gaining access to the ballot. We talked to talk the Unity Party in South Carolina. We got we talking with the pieces. Does this sound like a winning strategy to anybody in the chat right now? <laughs> I want everybody, Gavin, we go back like 10 seconds. I hate when you do this, but I need us to hear it again, too, because I'm like, man, I, I hate listening to the dis- 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 disturbing parts twice. I'm like, oh, God, that hurt the first time. But let's go ahead and hurt ourselves again. So in some this states, I'll be independent. Acumen. In other states, I would need a party. In other states, there have been parties who come forward. Thank God for my brothers and sisters in Alaska, the Aurora Party. That's how I ended up gaining access to the ballot. We've talked to the Unity Party in South Carolina. We got we're talking with the Peace and Freedom Party to have their nomination in California. So you have to be very improvisational. I know people get tired of me talking I, about jazz. I do a I'm podcast the- for a living where I largely talk about politics. And even my head hurts thinking about this strategy. <laughs> Nobody in America that's like an average electoral voter participant, right? Which we already have to be thankful enough for that they take time off their fucking day at work or participate in the American democratic system, even though it's fucking very limited in its ability to represent them and also not even a national holiday. So they can't even guarantee themselves pay while they're gone. Do you really think they're going to be, well, and let me see which state I am in and let me, you know, pull my cue card and do, you know, do the triangle math. Am I voting for Cornell West and the Justice for All Party? No, the Aurora Party. Oh, no, I'm doing the write in effort. Like, what to what end is this for, Dr. West? What are you hoping to accomplish? Because if you tell me you're hoping to win the election, like, that's a non starter. You will not win the election, period right? It's not going to happen. 
It's not even worth discussing. Discussing, excuse me. When we're on the left here, and we're probably your biggest simps, like the people like us, we're the red and but we want to vote for third party. And even we're like, this isn't this isn't serious. This is yeah. this is an embarrassment. This is something that makes me feel bad about being a leftist. Okay, that means you're not going to win the presidency. So <laughs> what else are you trying to accomplish? That's what I want to know from him. That would be the next question I have for him. What the fuck are, are you doing it as a way? Like, if it was, a, if it was, a, if it was even a single issue campaign, if he was like, all I, all I care about is ceasefire, I would be able to get behind this and I would be able to say yes, like Mike Ravel, like get up there and make as big of a noise as you can about the ceasefire and talk about how neither of these candidates. And I know he does support a ceasefire, but the the messaging campaign style is not the one that he's adopting. He is not making this a single issue campaign, which is I think the only le- the only reason reasonable tactic left that he would have is to be able to make that his number one issue and saying if you want to ceasefire vote for me and every vote for me is a message to the government saying we want to ceasefire now we want to end our support of the ethnic cleansing of the palestinian people and i want you to know that when whenever i have my acceptance speech i will tell them every person for me was a vote against what is happening that would be a real tangible political message in the same way the people of new hampshire in the democratic primary wrote in ceasefire as an option instead of joe biden that would at least be a political statement you know you wouldn't have to really fundraise much from people uh you know who can't afford it right because you're already dealing with the like most vulnerable and poorly funded individuals when you're a lefty right uh especially a lefty candidate this is the women of prayer cash that we try not to ask people for right um so I just think that that would make it a salient message. Then guys like me could send him 20 bucks to, you know, hey, I'm trying to help you get on the debate stage, you know, like I'll buy a pair of or some rolling papers or a T-shirt for Dr. West ceasefire now, you know, we'll get the ball going in that direction. But this just seems to, this just seems aimless. This is this just again, like I hate to use the term vanity run because obviously Dr. West has devoted his life to activism. He's devoted his life to research and advocacy. And I respect the hell out of that. And I think that, of course, he's qualified to go out there and run for president. I just wish that he would be doing it with more structure and with you know just more serious it feels like it debases his legacy almost to watch him go out there and do this bro yeah and if it was just the bad strategy i think it would be more forgivable because let's be honest academics intellectuals and leftists in general they don't always make for the best organizers or managers so it's understandable. What I find to be really repellent is like the missteps involving the People's Party, you know, associating yourself with a known predator and grifter and elevating him in the process. That was inexcusable to not do your research. Um, then to take money from Harlan Crow, a notorious right wing billionaire, um, completely going back on the principles of the Bernie Sanders campaign, which was to reject all billionaire money, a campaign that Cornell West was a surrogate for. And also, you know, all of that in the context of the news that this guy owes money to the IRS and child support and stuff like that. It it, it kind of creates the appearance that this is a self-enrichment scheme. I'm not alleging that, but it's not a good look. It's simply not a good look. 